Since posting the video on the Raspberry Pi Pico and a few YouTube shorts of controlling my Ender 3 V3 SE's light bar with a relay on the mainboard LED pin, I've had a bunch of requests to go over how to actually do this type of stuff. So I'd like to show you a few different methods in this video on how to make it all work. A lot of printer MCUs are coming out these days with some variation of the STM32 processor. On the Elegoo Neptune 2 and 2S, it was the F103 or F407, depending on the model and when you bought your machine. On the Neptune 3, it's the F401, and on the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE and Neptune 3 Pro and 4 models, it's the STM32 F402, which is basically just an F401 made for the domestic Chinese market. Each manufacturer has a different pin schematic they work with when it comes to these processors. So just because you're using PA8 as a BL Touch servo control pin on one board doesn't mean that it won't be a filament runout sensor on another. There's no standardization and the majority of pins on these processors are general purpose input and output pins, or what we've come to know as GPIO. The first step in understanding these processors is to have a copy of the schematic used when the board was built to know what pin does what function. The cool thing about these and other similar microcontroller processors is that the GPIO pins can also be remapped to do things other than their intended purpose. As an example, let's consider the Wi-Fi TX and RX or transmit and receive pins on the Elegoo Neptune boards. The Elegoo Neptune 3 and Prototype models cannot use a Wi-Fi module, thereby leaving a bunch of GPIO pins that can be repurposed for other uses. We can use these pins to communicate with our Linux devices via UART by flashing a firmware binary with these pins set as a communication channel for Marlin or Clipper and setting up our Linux device to utilize these send and receive pins with send and receive pins on the device, eliminating the need for a USB cable sticking out of the machine when trying to communicate with a Linux device. Another way we could utilize these pins would be with a BL Touch or a similar probing system. If we look at the pin arrangement on socket J17 of the Neptune 3 and 3 Pro boards, we can see that we have a 5 volt positive, ground, and two pins, one labeled TXD2 and the other labeled RXD2. If we trace those pins back to the pin assignments on the STM32, we can see that they are located at pin locations PA2 and PA3. Knowing this information, if we have a Neptune 3 Pro, Plus, or Max running Clipper firmware and would like to connect the BL Touch to replace the inductive probe on the board, we can simply change the probe section to a BL Touch section fill in the section with the additional information that a BL Touch would require, and make sure that our pin assignment for the control pin is either the TX or RX pin, and bam, the bracket they sell on AliExpress isn't so useless after all. When it comes to wiring in the power and logic portion of the BL Touch, we would simply have to connect the pins as shown here, which on a standard BL Touch cable would require swapping the power and servo wires inside the DuPont connector, but otherwise, everything should work properly on reboot as long as you've got the Z-axis limit switch wires plugged into the correct slot on your MCU. This feature is not limited to those pins, however. Oh no siree. If we look at the ZMP Robin Nano version 2.2 from the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro Plus and Max, I've highlighted sources of GPIO pins in green to give you an idea of just how much can be done using this board. We have GPIO, 5 volt, and ground pins on each of the empty limit switch ports, Wi-Fi section, the empty stepper driver headers and some additional GPIO pins in the second thermistor port and the six pin area closest to the STM32 processor, slightly left of center. That six pin section is typically used to flash the STM32 with an ST flash device in the event of bricking your board, but these pins can also be remapped as well. On the top right of the photo, you'll see two yellow boxes marked 24 volt constant power. These are helpful when you need to source power for a device such as a Big Tree Tech Pi. I have tried running 24 volt LED strip lighting with these ports, however, and they just don't seem to have a steady enough stream of 24 volt power for the lighting, and they do tend to flicker a little bit. I think they may need some sort of inline capacitors or something to kind of smooth out the current that's going through them. Looking at the board schematic for the Ender 3 V3 SE and KE offers a little insight as to what is going on where, but unfortunately, they don't give you those nice pin by pin graphics other companies like Big Tree Tech include with their boards. Looking at this when I connected the light control relay board to my machine gave me a rough idea of what pin I would find where, but I still had to test those pins to be sure. One good tool to have when working on electrical components is a multimeter to test output voltage and polarity of pins. Another good tool would be an oscilloscope, which can be used to test whether or not a pin is supplying pulse width modulation, otherwise known as PWM, and show you the resulting waveform of the pulse width modulation. You can save a few bucks by getting a combo tool like you see here that can do both, Although I'm not sure of how great it is at doing either or because I haven't personally tried it. 
Another good thing to have on hand are DuPont wires, which can be inserted into the pin headers of the MCU and used to test the pins more safely than trying to cram multimeter leads into a tight area and potentially short something out. Another way you can help spread things out a little would be to have a breadboard handy and use insertable header pins to give yourself test points for each of the pins on your MCU. If you look at the graphic on the right, you can see how you can get a little extra room between pins and help reduce the risk of blowing up any components on your board. Another good thing to have handy would be a JST XH and DuPont connector crimp set, which lets you make your own cables for about 90% of the sockets available on most control boards. There are some outlier components with different connectors, but that's a whole nother ball game, and crimp kits are pretty hard to find for those sorts of connectors. As mentioned before, another great way to use the GPIO pins are to control relays to provide on and off control for various devices. In my case, I connected a relay to my printers to provide a way to turn the LED lighting on each machine on and off using firmware commands rather than using switches. But that's all relays really are. They're just electronic switches that can turn devices on and off through electrical means rather than having to physically switch a device on and off. If we look at this relay, we can see on the right that it takes in three wires. A ground, a positive input, and a signal. It states clearly on the relay cube what the input voltage will be for the coil, and in this case it's 5 volt DC. The signal is what tells the relay to switch on and off, and the 5 volt and ground are the source power to drive the little electromagnet inside the relay. This relay is a single pole double throw, or SPDT, meaning that it can switch a single circuit on and off using the normally open and normally closed pins on the left. A common potential comes in on the center pin, and it can be either a positive or negative lead. If we look at the data on the relay, we can see that the high voltage side of the relay, which are the terminals on the left, are able to switch both AC and DC voltage up to 10 to 12 amps depending on the voltage that is being used. The normally closed terminal will complete the circuit when the switch coil is in the off state, and the normally open terminal will complete the circuit when the coil is in the on state. Now, let's look at the meat and potatoes of how I was able to connect a relay to the board of the Ender 3 V3 SE. Using my multimeter, I put a black probe on the ground lug of the incoming 24 volt power, and then simply probed each pin of the LCD section of the board until I found a 5 volt constant power. This LCD socket does not get used because of the fact that there is another socket feeding the power and communication of the original control screen. From this point, I needed to find a source for ground and signal from the pins on the LED section of the board on the right. Finding ground was easy. I selected the continuity mode of my multimeter, turned the machine off, and probed pins until I found this ground pin here. To finish, I turned the machine back on, set up an output and clipper with the PC0 pin that was listed in the open source schematic, and was able to use clipper screen to toggle the state of the output on and off while grounding the black lead of my multimeter as I did earlier, and using the red lead of my multimeter to test all of the pins on this socket with the output in both the on and off state. Once I found the pin that changed state along with the output status and clipper, I knew I had everything that I needed. Once that was all figured out, I connected the G from the relay to the ground on the LED section of the board, the S to the output signal on PC0, and the 5 volt constant to the pin in the LCD section, which was the only source of 5 volt I was able to find while doing this. Due to using lighting that takes 24 volt DC, I connected the LED light's negative leg to a ground on the power supply, then ran a 24 volt positive lead from the power supply to the relay COM input, and then connected the normally open pin to the positive leg of the LED light. This allows the light to turn on when the signal is triggered, causing the electromagnet inside the relay to engage. Going back to the schematic, we can see the output pin PC0 gets put into the printer config file using this output pin section listed here. On my Elegoo machines, I used the Z positive limit switch socket as the power, ground, and signal for the relay, so I was able to use a 3 pin JST XH cable to connect the S, V, and G of the pin header from the ZMP Robin nano board to the S, V, and G of the relay cube. The 24 volt power side was wired in the same fashion as the Ender 3 V3 SE. Looking at the schematic for the ZMP Robin Nano V2.2 in this example, the Z positive signal pin is tied to PC14. So inside of Clipper, that's the pin that gets used in the output section to control the relay for the LED light. And finally, looking at this photo of my Elegu Neptune 2, you can see how I've connected the Z positive limit switch pins to the S, V, and G pins on the control relay for the lighting. I designed a mounting plate that screws in underneath the blower fan to hold the relay in place while being able to retain the factory screws. The slight change in height of the fan does not affect board cooling, and the relay sits in a dead spot that was not being utilized, so I found this to be the best solution.
So my takeaways are that having extra GPIO is a great way to add peripherals using both your printer's MCU as well as external devices such as the GPIO pins on your Clipper SBC or even another device like a Raspberry Pi Pico or other similar device. It's very easy to set up these GPIO pins in Clipper as long as you have the proper schematics and a way to test the pins. Keep in mind that you can also do this in Marlin, but it requires a lot more work to modify the pin files and recompile firmware every time you want to add something. As mentioned earlier, you'll be working with different voltages inside of your machine, some of which can kill you until you die from it, such as the mains voltage going into your printer's power supply, and sometimes your printer's heat bed if you have an AC mains bed heater like the JSR silicone heater on my Anycubic Chiron. There is also voltage that is dangerous to the sensitive components of your 3D printer, so take care not to short anything out. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you're enjoying this type of content and haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know somebody else who'd be interested in this type of stuff, share it with a friend because sharing is caring. Check out my affiliate links in the description down below at no additional cost to you. It just puts a little bit of catnip into my kitty and it helps with my future channel endeavors. If you're part of the cesspool that is Facebook, join the group, Elegoo Neptune Series 3D Printers, Mods, Tweaks, and Improvements, where we offer 24-hour live chats and community support, do the occasional giveaway, and blatantly abuse the everyone tag. But hey, at least we're not a spam fest of 3D artists like those other guys. If you got 10 seconds to kill, check out my website at www.theferalengineer.com. It's just a whole bunch more of the same stuff, but it justifies the 12 bucks a year I spend on the URL. And once again, thank you to all of my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.